ATW in this motherfucker. <laughs> hey, look how I fuss with y'all. Look, man, I just motherfucker just scratch my eye this goddamn morning and shit. So my eye getting a little swollen and shit. But you know, check this out, motherfucker. We still gonna get into the frequency vibrations in this motherfucker. And we gonna talk about what does it mean to create an atmosphere. Now, look, y'all can get lost into scientific terms of atmosphere all y'all want. To the point that y'all looking at the stratosphere, the atmosphere, this, all the kind of spheres. But we're going to break down fears and how fears actually get derived in the fucking first place. Because this is what my channel is about. Shout out to the motherfucking subconscious community in this motherfucker. So check this out. And, you know, flight morning, everybody. This, this, you know what I'm saying? I still got the pillow face and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? I had to get up real quick and make a few moves this morning and shit. But, you know, for the most part, look, check this out. We're going to get into what the fuck we talking about. Uh, creating an atmosphere. Now, you ain't even got to call it atmosphere. We could call it sphere because once you want to get scientific, we're going to start talking about all kinds of spheres. Now, once we want to get into those kind of spheres, we're going to have to start talking about sizes and the reason why we give it the title before the sphere, like, like the atmosphere and the stratosphere, because we're talking about something going from small to large. You know what I'm saying? And we're talking about a bigger body of water to a smaller body of water. And we're talking about frequency vibrational levels of these bodies of water. So that's basically what a sphere is. So check this out. Now, when we're talking about creating an atmosphere, you ever heard somebody say, man, I'm trying to create a good environment. You know what I'm saying? You might have been around someone who just had children. So they say, I'm trying to create a good environment around my children. You might have found somebody who just got a new business opportunity. So they say, man, look, I'm trying to create a, a good environment around my business so it can flourish. Depending on the circumstance or situation, you may hear somebody say they're trying to create an environment. Now, take that same energetic frequency I'm giving you right now and take that to an esoteric nature, right? This is the same thing when you're creating an atmosphere or when you're creating a sphere. Now, a sphere creates a reality. This is why we call it a sphere of reality. Because, you know, the bigger the sphere is, the bigger the sphere is, the more reality it appears to be. The more realistic it appears to be. The more it has enough chemical and elements and bacteria and archons and parasites in it to formulate what y'all want to call something to vibrate low enough to be seen as solid. You know what I'm saying? Or to be seen as physical. So, this is what we're creating but we're adding so much energy to it that the energy becomes dense. So don't be calling spirit or God energy because spirits are the creator, not the creation. And energy is what we're creating. Your thought is an energy. Your emotions and feelings is an energy. You know what I'm saying? So where are they coming from? They're coming from you or they're coming from an external reference, a.k.a. another spirit. Nine times out of ten, you need to come to the conclusion within yourself like, OK, as spirits, we're creating these things. So the moment we call ourselves these things, that is a higher version of being lost in the light. Because in a higher realm of reality, these are versions of lights. So you need to keep that in mind. So when we're talking about creating an atmosphere or creating a sphere, right? This is going to take more than just one spirit. Because one spirit could be vibrating very high based upon its own spiritual nature. But for the most part, you know, for this energy, a.k.a. influence, a.k.a. force, this spirit, this creator, this space creates as an energy. You know what I'm saying? Based upon one spirit, this spirit may not have enough soul force to make that influence, that body of water big enough for a lot of other spirits to swim in it, a.k.a. to see where that spirit is coming from. Seeing, swimming. So if you're not emitting enough influence, if you're not pushing out enough fluid, enough chakra with your spirit, then it may not cover enough lands, a.k.a. cover enough grounds, a.k.a. cover enough space to be picked up on, a.k.a. paid attention to from other spirits so they can add their influence on along with it so it can become a big old beach. 
but for the most part, a big old ocean, a big old star. Now, here's the thing, right? This is why it takes one spirit to attract another spirit based upon the spirit creations, influences, bodies of water. Therefore, once it attracts another spirit, another spirit can add its influence to that body of water also. And once there's a multitude of spirits creating that influence or that body of water, they're all going towards the same idea and feelings and emotions. They create an atmosphere, a.k.a. when you walk into this environment, you will pick up a certain spirit. This is why when you walk into certain people's households, right, you pick up certain you pick up different vibrations. Right. Because within that household, that family have created an environment. So when you walk into that environment, you walk into that atmosphere. So you pick up what the vibes. This is why the moon control the tides and your emotional state of being. So you can't be hating on the, the energetic frequency forces out here in astrology if you really don't know how to pinpoint energy. Because you'll be the first person who hate on these things. And, it's, and you're the same person who's receiving the energy the same way everybody else is. So you need to keep that in mind. Now, check this out. Once you create an atmosphere, an environment, right? You created a mini sphere, a, a, a mini cloud, a mini realm of reality. So anytime someone come into your world, a.k.a. your surroundings, they pick up the ideas and the feelings that you correlate to. You see what I'm saying? You pick up the feelings and emotions that's correlated to the, um, to the circumstances of the environment. You, you pick up on the thoughts and the ideas of the atmosphere. So for the most part, this puts you in a situation where you understand what you have just created. So this is the whole thing when we talk about creating the atmosphere or when we're, when we're talking about creating the sphere. And once you understand this small purpose of it, you can start to understand how planets is created. You can start to understand how... Um, how, how atmospheres is created in, a, in a general and how certain life can be created within certain atmospheres and that, that level of life know how to live in that frequency vibration. And based upon you being a human, this lets you know how to decipher what level of vibration you're in based upon a frequency and based upon spiritually what state of being you are in based upon the, the body that you have created to experience this, this level of life that you are in. You see what I'm saying? So we're all creating atmosphere, we're all creating environments, and we're all helping each other. This is why it's always subjectivity before objectivity. Because for it to be objectivity, there has to be an agreement with a bunch of subjectivities. And remind you, you can argue with me with that all you want. But if I say your spirit is your space, right? And I don't give a fuck how small you make a space. There's always going to be space within a space. So there's always, if there came... There, once upon a time, there was a multitude of something that had that had, didn't have anything to do. I don't know why I always forget to delete the previous videos, but look, check this out. There's there's a few key components when it comes into uh, creating a good environment or creating a good atmosphere, right? So for the most part, you need to understand it's going to be heavily back to supported by um, what matters to you. Now, for the most part, what matters to you is what actually brings the archives and the parasites and the actual bacteria that can get created in these waters, in your influences. So you need to know what matters to you is what actually draw in and manifests actual matter in your actual life. And the things that matter is like bacteria and things that could become solid and shit like that. So you have to keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? When something matters to you, it's something that you have created within one of your influences or your chakras and you honed in on it. So you had got lost in it. So as a spirit, you rotated in that area, in that space for so long that those ideas and feelings and emotions became actual matter. So they took physical representations into your life. And it'll slowly but shortly play out as a like a, a spiritual state of being you'll start being in. That a thought a thought form you'll start being in. Then you'll start expressing those emotions and feelings. And then you'll start carrying out those things uh, physically. But um, for the most part, you need to understand that um, that's what happens when something matters to you. You start to create stairs you start to create a ladder you start to create a grounding to 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 stand on you start to create logic and practicality around something that really has nothing to do with logic and practicality but this is how things become reality this, you, you get how i'm trying to explain to y'all this is how things become motherfucking real so what y'all think is real when you can say it's not real yeah that sounds good but what basis are you grounding that on 
And when I say this realm of reality is not real, and when you think you're waking up, you're actually asleep, you have to actually break it down for someone can clearly understand that. Otherwise, someone would take knowledge like this and really, really psych themselves up into thinking they understand what you're actually trying to say. So to be wake is actually to be sleep. So when you hear things like the book of the dead and things of that nature, it's like you're waking up the dead. So as a spirit, you're going into dead fleshly fluids. And you are experiencing that realm of reality through those shapes and forms. You see what I'm saying? And then once you leave that shape and form as a, as a spirit, you understand that Kabbalah or the, all that other shit. But for the most part, this is what the, the, the Book of Dead is actually trying to break down to you. You know what I'm saying? How you're not the body and how you're going to be separating from the body in some way, shape or form. Now, um, here's the thing. See, when we're creating an atmosphere um, and we're creating motherfucking environments this is don't just look at it like your mundane level understand this is how the whole environment is created that you are living in at the moment you know what i'm saying so for the most part yeah creating the atmosphere there's key components into creating good ones you can create a bad one like i said it's the, it's highly dependent on what matters to you now if there's a lot of positive in, let's not even take into positive and negative right now because once we started to once we started to get into this type of spiritual talk all tools have to be used in order for you to be able to sustain yourself and you to feel comfortable you see what i'm saying now here's how you decipher f you have created a good atmosphere or not. Now, you know, you're going to be attracting what matters to you. So if you got a bunch of other spirits adding on what matters to them within your realm of reality and your space also, then you guys are starting to create an atmosphere that could become big enough that other spirits that's in bodies can start, their, their pilot senses start tingling and shit and start picking up the ideas and vibes as soon as they even come close to your space. And if it's enough of y'all spirits adding on to the same frequency vibration as far as the atmosphere, then a, a spirit in a body will be able to pick up on those antennas a block up the street. Before they even come down that street, they start to feel the influences of that street. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving y'all the idea how this shit actually works. So for the most part, right, if you are in an environment and there's a bunch of negative influences, and I don't want to use negative, but let's just say influences that's not catering to you at the moment, then that lets you know you're adding on to a bad atmosphere. And whatever percentage that you're adding on to it is not big enough to outweigh it for anything to go into your favor. So you're, you're either just adding on to chaos and stormy weathers in the esoteric realm to be brought down into your realm of reality, or you're trying to find yourself through that storm and trying to find an umbrella or something like that. But for the most part, and you're trying to weather the storm so you don't destroy yourself. But at the same time, this is what's actually going on. So you need to know if you're in a fucked up atmosphere. Um, or if you're in a fucked up environment, let's say, then it is up to you to change that atmosphere. It is up to you to change that environment. And if you are around too many other spirits that's putting too much other toxins, toxic waste and, and toxic energy and influences and parasites into that atmosphere also, then you need to know you need to get away from that cloud. You know what I'm saying? Because based upon these people's spiritualities and how high they're vibrating, their influence might be so strong that the cloud that they're creating for the atmosphere is way bigger than the small cloud that you're creating. So whatever storm or rain percentage that you got to come down, no one's going to get hit with that water influence. So if it's a little bit of piece of happiness that you, the cloud that you put in that overall atmosphere that you're all creating, nobody going to sense that. Only the people that's close to you. And then they barely going to pick it up because they're going to be so heavily influenced by the environment or the atmosphere that's already created that you're just going to get outweighed to the point that you're going to have to take your little small ass cloud as a spirit and, and float into that, go into that cloud as a spirit because your spirit is no thing. But go into that cloud you created as that imagination and float lily pond your ass somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? To another day. Or nightmare that correlate more to your lights and chakras and your currents and your cloud that you emit. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, that's how it works. Now, if you are in an environment or you are in an atmosphere that is catered to you in some way, shape, or form, then I let you know that you are adding to 
or you are helpful to other other spirits that's in clouds or bodies that's around you and you are helping them see a better influence or see a better day or see a better imagination. Therefore, you, you're helping them brighten up their cloud so their cloud don't look so stormy and ready to storm down on anyone else. AKA, when we look at astrology, when you look at a storm, that's H2O. So that's a development of air and water being, compa being compacted. Once it's so once it becomes dense and so much, you see a storm. So astrological wise, that'll be heavy air and water, a uh, heavy cloud. That'll be a person who likes to communicate and wash down all their emotional instabilities onto other people. Almost to the point that this a person uh, talk to themselves um, and 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 throw their emotions and feelings on to everybody else due due to verbally and uh, communication wise and shit like that. This would be a person who would talk your ears off about their problems. That's esoteric wise. That's what I'm explaining right now. Will be a heavy cloud. So this heavy cloud right now, you need to know that when you want to put yourself in a, a, a brighter sunny day type of cloud. You ever seen a nice day like right now? You see, it's a nice bright. Uh, sunny day type of clouds, right? That means that you lighten it up your load. So you want to communicate light feelings and emotions, lighten people loads, make people happy, make people appreciative at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Make people feel more lighthearted at the moment and get them out of their dark so they don't have to wash down no deep emotions and thunderstorms and negative. They can wash down some good laughter and happiness at the moment. So, you know, that is this esoteric energy that you have to understand. Always understand the energetic frequencies behind things. And, you know, those this is just part one. You know, I'm just I'm just opening people mind up to the idea and a perspective of this so you can kind of get on board. So when I start breaking down part two, part three, part four, there we'll just be building that world. We'll just be building that atmosphere. We'll just be building this environment and this environment can take place globally. Due to the fact of us having the internet and things of that nature now. So, you know, get ready to get into 5G. So, I love y'all as a subconscious community. And, goddammit, we out in this motherfucking flight bus, bitch. <laughs>